God you all with us. And we especially um, extend a warm welcome to our brothers and sisters from UCC. We're really glad that you could join us tonight. You should have received a bulletin that looks like this. The bulletin looks like this tonight. Few notes about the service tonight. Um, tonight is, of course, a service of Holy Communion, and all baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table. Follow the direction of the ushers. They're gonna, the usher is going to send you down the center aisle to receive bread, and then you will go to whichever side the deacon happens to be on at that time, and you'll pick up a cup. Purple is wine. White is grape juice. Um, drink it and then put it in the empty trays that are on either end and return to your seat by the side aisles. Um, tonight's communion will be silent, um, so don't be freaked out about that. It's a very solemn service tonight, and um, in, in observation of that, we will be communing silently tonight. At the end of the service, um, we will be stripping the altar. That will be done in remembrance of Jesus' humiliation at the hands of the soldiers. Um, when that is complete, when we finish um, Psalm 22, we ask that you um, leave the church in silence tonight, um, continuing that solemnity. Um, after everyone else has left choir, if you stay, we're going to be having a rehearsal, correct? Right in here? Okay. Anything else you'd like to say? Oh, no. That's first. I mean... <laughs> All right, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Good Friday, and we will once again be worshiping here. We have a 2 o'clock service in the afternoon. We have a 7 o'clock service tomorrow evening. They are identical, so we hope that you can make one of those services. They are, um, each of the services is tenebrae, um, and if you're unfamiliar with that, tenebrae is a service of shadows. It's a service of scriptures and prayers and hymns that help us reflect on the death of Jesus. So that's the service we will be using tomorrow evening and tomorrow afternoon. Of course, Sunday, um, we start with breakfast at 8 o'clock downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Um, and then at 9.15, we come up here to worship. Um, it is a festival service of word and sacrament. Um, so we hope that you can be there. Now, if you cannot or if you know someone who cannot be at the 915 service on Sunday, the following week, the 16th, we'll be having one of our 2 o'clock in the afternoon services, and it also will be a festival Easter service. Um, we did that in response to a number of folks who said that they can't be up and ready by 915 to make a 915 service, many of our homebound members. So we started doing a 2 o'clock service every other month. So um, that will be the first of them, and we will have that um, on the 16th of April. So it is our tradition um, that when someone's birthday falls um, on a day when we are worshiping, that typically we sing happy birthday. This is um, a pretty solemn evening. So we will forego singing happy birthday to Bob, whose birthday it is today. And instead, on the count of three, we're going to give him a nice, rousing happy birthday. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday! So, that being said, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
service comes to an end. And we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight, we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples. But the central focus is his commandment that we live out the promise embodied in this meal. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love in humble service to one another. Formed into a new body in Christ through this holy meal, we are transformed by the mercy we have received and carry it into the world. Departing worship in solemn silence, we anticipate the coming days. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Let us confess our sin before God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and
you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb and that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall not let you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus' time is running short. We're not strangers to the idea of a person's last days of life. Because we know that we will all die, we often find ways to think about both our own last days and the last days of those we love. We make movies about it, both funny movies and gut-wrenching ones. Sometimes we sit at the bedside of our loved ones as they slip slowly away. Other times we're called to the emergency room in the middle of the night. But last days and death always find us eventually. That is why we understand the importance of a person's last days on earth. That is why Monday Thursday can hit us in such interesting ways. Because you see, we live in a world full of death. We've all lost loved ones. Often, the memories that stick out most in our minds are things that happened right before the person died, whether they were taken from us suddenly or slowly. Sure, we also remember things beside our last days. We remember eating together, laughing together, traveling together, intimate conversations, things like that. We also remember, perhaps most clearly, things that happened right before they died. Now on this night, a couple thousand years ago, Jesus, knowing that he is about to die, gathers his closest friends for a meal. These are some of the last memories his disciples will have of him before the crucifixion. Though they will remember other things about Jesus, traveling, laughing, talking with him, they will remember these moments perhaps most strongly. What he says and does tonight will echo for them throughout their lives as they begin to build the church that we know today. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus' time is running short. Yes, he will be resurrected, but Holy Week calls us to imagine ourselves in the places of those disciples. Imagining for once that we do not know 
the ending of the story. If death is not a reality, after all, Easter is no miracle. And Jesus is about to be put to death. Jesus' time is running short. What would you do if you knew you were about to die? What memories would you want to create for yourself, for your loved ones? What would you do if you had not weeks or months, but hours before your death? Because he loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. It's likely that most of us would try to be like Jesus in his last days before he was crucified. In our last week of life, most of us would probably not be concerned with our bucket lists, but rather with our loved ones. What would you do for those you love? What would you want them to know? How would you communicate those things? Jesus' time is running short, and the Gospel reading from John tonight tells the story of his last night with his disciples before he dies. And it's interesting to see how the Son of God chooses to spend his last hours before his death with those that he loves. What does he do? He shares a meal with them. He gives them some last instructions. And he gets up from the dinner table lays aside his outer robe, and washes his disciples' feet. Essentially, Jesus does exactly what many of us would do if we knew we were spending our last few hours with our loved ones. We would tell them things, yes. We might share a meal with them, like Jesus did. And perhaps above anything else, we would touch them one last time. We often forget how important our bodies are in our experience as human beings. We talk a lot about body and soul as if they're completely separate things in this world. When we consider our own loved ones, however, it's likely that their personalities are hardly separate in our minds from their faces, from the way they walk, the hand gestures they use frequently, the way they hug us, or even the way they smell. In the last few hours before his death, Jesus spends his time eating and drinking with his disciples and washing their feet, impressing into their minds and their bodies, the memory of him in an act of love. Now, contrary to the typical Sunday school understanding of this story, the foot washing isn't just about service. That is part of it, but it's only part of a much bigger picture. And it becomes clearer if you read the, the passages that are right around this text tonight. He loved them to the end. Love one another as I have loved you. The foot washing is about Jesus' love and his willingness to show that love, even if it means the vulnerability of washing his disciples' dirty feet. Even if it means an arrest and a trial before Pilate. Even if it means flogging and humiliation. Even if it means death by execution on a Roman cross. The foot washing is an acting out of the great commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Though caring for a sick loved one or making dinner for a friend 
may be an act of service, we most commonly describe those kinds of things as acts of love. So it is with, with foot washing at that last holy meal. We can only imagine how those disciples felt in that moment. Humbled, shocked, awkward. Peter, Peter speaks up, of course. He says, are you going to wash my feet? You will never wash my feet. It's supposed to go the other way around. We hear Peter's objection, and it sounds like a lot of ours would be. He knows who Jesus is, and there is no way that the word of God made flesh is going to wash his feet. Jesus, he doesn't argue. He asks nothing of Peter or the other disciples, but that they place themselves fully into his hands and trust that he knows what he's doing. He tells Peter, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Peter has no idea what Jesus is doing. But Jesus isn't interested in telling Peter why he's washing his feet. He's just asking for Peter to trust him, to be vulnerable. Because you see, this is not how foot washing works. I'm sorry, let me say that again the right way. This is not just how foot washing works. This is often how God works, too. We don't always know what God is doing. God only asks us to trust, to be vulnerable, to believe that he loves us fiercely, and to receive God's love in mind, heart, soul, and body. That's what he asks of us, that's what he asked of his disciples. What moments will the people in our lives remember when we are gone? What moments will we remember of those who go on before us? Truly, we are all imperfect, and we can all be hard to live with. And yet constantly, we are blessed to see and laugh with and touch and embrace people who love us. Maybe you experience this with your significant other. Maybe with your kids or your grandkids. Maybe with your friends or other loved ones or with your church family. Cherish those moments. Those are God's grace given to you through other people. They are sacramental. They are holy. That is what we will remember when we no longer walk this earth together. It's what we will cherish until we see each other again on the other side. When we share the feast with Christ in his kingdom. We love one another, and we do so even in our imperfection, because Christ first loved us. He showed us how much he loves us. For tonight, time is running short for Jesus. But we live in a world full of death. Time is running short for all of us. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. As time runs short for Jesus, 
May we experience this story as if for the first time, forgetting that we know the ending. Because this isn't just a story of Jesus. This is a story of our Savior, the Word of God made flesh for us. This is our story. It is the story that tells us who we are and whose we are and why we are commanded to love one another. We are who we are because he loved his own who were in the world and he loved us fiercely to the end, even when his time was running short. Of resources. 
Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You, our Savior and Teacher, stoop down to us in servant love. Inspire all leaders with a renewed sense of public service. Increase in them a humility to serve with equity and fairness. Bless the men and women of our armed forces and teach us to pray even for our enemies. Hear us, O oh God. You incline your ear to us in every need. Befriend all who are lonely. Comfort those who grieve. Soothe those who are anxious. Console all who are distressed. Graciously tend to the hurts of your children who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name to you now. Hear us, O oh God. Precious in your sight is the death of your faithful ones. We remember and give you thanks for those who have died in the faith, those we named you now. With them, we trust your promise to love your own until the end. Hear us, O oh God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Glory and honor and blessing to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You sent us your Son. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. Yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then, in the fullness of time, he completed upon the cross the sacrifice of his life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you love. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints 
from every tribe and language, people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and blessing forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. Congregation, you may be
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in a wonderful sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your suffering and death. May this sacrament of Christ's body and blood so work in us that the way we live will proclaim the redemption you have brought through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yeah. 
Be not far from me, for trouble is near. and 